Hello Scala community! In this first tutorial I'd like to showcase some advanced techniques using Cat's effect. So let's uh, write some code and see where this takes us. We're gonna extend IO app. And let's define the always useful put string line that returns an IO of units. And let's just write the simple hello world program to, to start with. Perfect, let me just fix the import and this should be ready to go. Cool, let's run this. And we get our hello world output in the console. Perfect, so let's start with the real example. We're gonna create a list of numbers from uh, 1 to 10. In order to do so, I have to create a range 1 to 11. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna convert, we're gonna map every single integer in this list to the effect of printing it out to the console. So that means we can just call put string line here, and this gives us a list of IO of units. Now, if we call sequence, we can flip the effects and we can get an IO of list of units. So if we run this, we can see the numbers from 1 to 10 printed out into the console. Perfect. And it's been really fast, so let's introduce some delay here just to see how, how it works slowly. 150 minutes should be enough. Let's import duration. And let's run this again. And there we go. We can appreciate the sequentiality of this program. It runs one after the other, and if you run it again, it's always in a very deterministic way. That's cool. And here we are using map sequence, and if you ever stumble across this pattern, it's, it's so common that uh, there is a combinator called traverse that it's basically map and sequence. So we can replace map and sequence by traverse and we should get the same program here. And there we go. Another useful combinator in Cat's effect is called par traverse. Uh, as the name suggests, it, it runs the effects in parallel. Um, so if we run this program again, we might get a non-deterministic output. Uh, in this case, we get all in order. Right, yeah, here we had a non-deterministic one, not, not in order, and so on. So if you run it multiple times, we get always different results. Um, so it's pretty useful. Uh, many times we don't want to wait on other computations to run the other effects, so we can use uh, the par combinators. Um, but this example is uh, pretty pretty simple. There is no failure. This never fails. So let's introduce uh, more complexity. I'm going to refine a random put string line that might fail. So this will also take an A and will return I of units. And in order to introduce this randomness, we're going to create a random uh, integer. Remember that creating a random value, uh, it's a side effect in Scala, so we need to wrap that in, in I.O. So then we flat map and we can access this uh, randomly generated number and we can pattern match straight away here. So we'd say if we get an, let's say, um, if we get an even number, that means an n modulo 2 equals 0, then we are going to call the normal put string line and otherwise we are gonna raise an error. Let's call this fail and we're gonna have as a message uh, the value of the randomly generated number and the value of A. That should be it. Now let's create this uh, error type we just defined here. Case class fail. We'll take 
a message type string and we're gonna extend uh, no stack trace because we don't care about stack trace um, let's uh, override the two strings just to make it look nicer because otherwise we'll get a cryptic message into the console so let's say this is fail print out the value and yes that should be ready to go okay let's let's now replace our normal put string line here by our random put string line so what happens if we run this program now well we get a failure there and we are not catching the errors basically because we are raising the error here in the part traverse um, so what we need to do here is um, do a handle error with, with and we are only interested in handling the fail case so in this case we can say um, first failure and we're gonna print this out into the console and that's it just to avoid these uh, uncaught failures in, in the SVT console let's run this again there we go yeah so we get we get this uh, first failure and but we don't get any of the successful values printed out into the console like we are just and that's because um, that's the default behavior of part traverse part traverse will fire off the all the computations in parallel but if there is any failure it will cancel all the other computations and it will uh, finish with failure and this kind of this default behavior is very unfortunate sometimes um, so we might want to uh, we might want to have this short circuiting behavior uh, on the first failure return but we might be running some expensive computations in the background and we want that to finish we don't want to cancel them we don't want them to be interrupted um, so one way to achieve that is we need to define a custom function I'm gonna call that Power fail fast. Sorry about the name. Um, naming is hard. <laughs> and this is gonna take a list of IO of A. And the same signature as traverse, it will flip the effects, so this should give us back an IO of list of A. So we we'll start by doing the part traverse here. To get access to our, our I of A, I'm gonna call that F of A. And here I'm gonna need some tricks. I'm gonna need a purely functional promise or a synchronization concurrent data type. And in cat's effect, this is called deferred. So we're gonna create a deferred that will hold either a throwable that represents the failure or a single value of type A. Remember that a deferred, it's always empty and it can be completed only once. So if we flat map, we can access to this uh, deferred value. And here, our f of a, in our case, represents a random put string line that can fail. So one way to deal with, deal with these failures is called attempt on it. And if we flat map, we can complete our deferred value using that the value of uh, of this attempt which is either a throwable or a and we can just fire off this in the background we don't want to wait for this to finish uh, but the trick is like <coughs> after this action this is running in the background we want to wait for this uh, the, the, the result of this promise which might be either a failure or a single a so we get this in IO of either or throwable or A, so we can just call rethrow. If we get a if we get a successful value, that's perfect. If we get a failure, that's gonna be raised in the context of IO. And that should be pretty much it. Like with this function here, we can achieve the functionality we want. Basically a short circuit on the first failure, but keep running the other computations in the background. Okay, so let's replace our code by using this new function perfect fast. I need to call 
uh, need to map these uh, integers to our effects and the rest should remain the same yep. that should be our code I guess that compiles okay let's run this again let's see what we get Woo. okay so we got a first failure when we were processing a equals 2 but we can see we got five successful values printed out into the console let's run it again again the first failure happened when we were processing a equals 2 but in this case we got six successful values uh, one thing we are not seeing here we are processing a, a list of 10 numbers from 1 to 10 we got six successful values printed out into the console and the first failure but that means there are three other failures that we are not seeing and the reason why it's because we are swallowing these errors right here we are just calling attempt and that runs in the background calling start um, and we are never handling them because we short circuit on the first failure and that's all we handle and then our program ends here uh, so one way that we can have uh, some visibility here it's by introducing a handler I'm um, gonna call this uh, uh, this is like it will be just a logger in our case we're gonna print out to the console uh, what's going on so it's a partial function from throwable to i of a and we are only interested in handling the fail case in which case we are just gonna print the error into the console and we raise the error once again Now we can use this handler here if we call recover with, which takes a partial function. Now if we run this again, we should have some visibility on the other failures. And there we go. So we have five successful values and five failures. But the first failure happened when we were process processing A equals one, and that was the this a equals one failure gets printed out here in our logger in our handler but it's the only one being handled here because it's just the first failure this is the response uh, that we give to the user in case this is a function that it's called by an external API so I think this is super powerful and, and in a few lines of code in a few lines of code if you can modify the default behavior of our traverse um, we can run it again and see how this works we get three six successful values and four failures but the first failure occurred when we were processing a equals five so i think this is super cool this is like super fast um, i mean in a few lines of code just using the tools that the library cats effect provides for us we were able to um, define the behavior that we wanted to um, and in this case we are committing just using list and io straight away but we could make this generic by writing this function in a polymorphic way and uh, that's what I've done here in this part task uh, objects so I define this in a, in a polymorphic way we only need um, a polymorphic she that has the traverse instance and a polymorphic f that has a concurrent and a parallel instance that's all we need and then the implementation is exactly the same so if we can call this using list and io that would work so that's all I've, I have today. I hope you, enjoy, you, you have enjoyed this tutorial and please let me know if you would like to see any other tutorials like using Cats Effect, FS2 or any other purely functional library in the Scala community. Uh, I, I will be glad to, to help you out. Um, so thank you for watching. <laughs>